Hi, my name is Kenneth Rasmussen and I'm an application engineer with Roda and Svart in Denmark. What I will show you today is a way to do EMI pre-compliance measurements using the RTO or the RTE uh, oscilloscope families uh, together with a, a listen network and a PC software application. Doing pre-compliance measurement early in development is getting more and more important so that you can track down any issues that you have early in your development phase. Uh, not everybody has a spectrum analyzer available in the R&D department, which is the instrument that you typically do, uh, typically use to do these kinds of measurements. But with the powerful FAT function of these oscilloscopes here, we are actually capable of doing quite uh, capable measurements uh, in the EMC world. So, what I will do today is a very simple example. I have a, I have a light saving bulb here, which makes some noise that I will connect to my listen network. And then I will set up the software to do some, uh, some measurements. So I will connect it here. So we have some light. And I could set up the oscilloscope uh, manually. But it is a, a rather tedious task to set up the different traces and the, the FFT to, uh, to do this. So instead, to make it easy for, uh, for, for everyday use, we have developed a software application that uh, can do just that. This software application has two sets of controls. One set of controls here where you can actually control the uh, frequency ranges, the, uh, the setting, the time setting, the FFT settings and so on. Also setting of the transducer factor for the, uh, for the listen network that we have here. Another set of controls that we have in the software is down here for the, uh, for the different traces. What do we want? Do we want peak detector? Do we want average detector and so on? We can set up limit lines and so on so that we get measurements results presented in uh, in a way that is very similar to what we're getting on uh, on spectrum analyzer measurements so in order to make it easy i can uh, i can select up here predefined uh, CISPR bands and i will click here on CISPR band b and that will set up the frequencies and set up the uh, FFT traces. What we need to do is determine which standard are we testing against. So let's say that we are testing against uh, EN55011. So we will set up a quarter peak limit line for the peak detector and we will set up an average limit line for the average detector. I would like to see the time domain signal on the scope as well. So I'm putting a check mark here and that's basically it. So if we are now clicking set up RTO button up here, we can now see that the scope is being set up. We have up here the, uh, the time domain signal and we have here one FFT that is running in an envelope mode to get the peak detector results. And we have another one here running in average mode to get the, uh, the average detector mode. The bars that we have up here is uh, is a mask that has been set up to emulate the, uh, the typical limit lines that we also see on the, uh, on the screen that we have here. So I can put the F two FFTs on top of each other and then we now clearly can see that we have a trace which is equivalent to the peak detector on the spectrum analyzer and we have another trace equivalent to the average detector on, uh, on the spectrum analyzer. So this is now doing measurements, it's just uh, refreshing the, uh, the data, but we could do a, a max hold so that we could sort of maximize the, uh, the, uh, the problems that we see. And uh, then once we have, have the scope to acquire data for some time, we can go and get the traces and get them back to the, uh, to the software here. It's now acquiring the traces. And here we now can see the uh, the traces from the peak detector and here we can see the trace from the average detector. We can see that the peak detector here in the lower end is actually violating the limit lines which is also indicated on the scope here where we have the, uh, the top limit line or mask here indicated in red means that we have a violation. For the average detector we are just below or on the limit line so, uh, so we, have a, uh, we have a very close 
pass uh, here. So a simple way to acquire the, uh, the data from the oscilloscope and uh, you have different features in the programs like that you can, uh, you can acquire a screen copy so that you get a screen copy of what you see that you can use for, for documentation purposes or you have the possibility actually to create a, a test report that looks like the test report that you are getting from the, uh, from the test house where you typically go with your, uh, with your device to do the compliance measurements. So you have a test report where you can fill in a lot of information about your device and so on and you're getting all the, uh, the settings for the, uh, for, the, for the measurement, what traces, what limit lines and so on have you been using. You have a screenshot of the, uh, of the actual graph from the software and you can also choose to include the, uh, the screen dump in, in the report. This can be saved to, uh, to an RTF file and you can then later on uh, print the, the test report. Test as we have test that we have been doing uh, comparing the measurement with this system to a uh, spectrum analyzer is uh, often producing results within plus minus a dB of what you get with a, with a spectrum analyzer. So a quick introduction to this. Thank you.